We're here today with uh, Hendersonville soccer coach Russ Plummer. Um, first off, thank you for interviewing with us today. Um, let's start off. Tell me about when you got involved in soccer and then go into a little bit about what you did at Indiana. Sure. Uh, I started playing soccer at a very young age, maybe uh, third grade. Uh, I went to a small private high school. We didn't have football, so soccer was the main sport in the fall. Um, growing up in Indiana, everybody played basketball in the winter, obviously. Um, and a lot of us played soccer, basketball, baseball, you know, our entire lives. Uh, from a young age, I think I was very unique. In fact, I knew I wanted to coach. Um, had opportunities to go to other schools and play soccer, but knew I'd be far better off going to Indiana, which at that time, and even presently, is the best college program in the country. Um, and I wouldn't trade that experience for anything. Uh, best friends with the coaches, best friends with the players, did everything with them. Um, we won two national championships, runner-up, you know, in the third year. Saw the good, the bad, the ugly, and it was just a great experience. Wouldn't trade that for anything at all. It, is that where you developed your, your coaching style from, is from your time at Indiana? I think I had a large part of it, but I think any coach, um, you learn from everybody. Um, believe it or not, I go to a lot of games now, and I try and sit where I can see the coach. Um, and a lot of times, especially basketball, I'll, I'll try and sit where I can actually hear the coach at, at, at a timeout. Um, and I think, again, even things you know you'd never want to do, you pick that up. Um, but surely, Indiana had a great impact on what I do today. Um, my high school coach was phenomenal. Um, and I think that's a large reason why a person like myself wanted to become a coach, because of the impact coach had myself. Um, and I don't like to say I or me a lot, but I mean, this interview kind of calls for that. But uh, those, my high school coach, my junior high coach, my dad, my college coach, Mr. Decker, those are the four major influences in my life. So definitely had a big part of what I do today. Now you, a, a large part of your team has, has always been focused around defense. Um, I know that we've, we've talked several times about no matter if, if they're a defender, if they're a forward, it, it, you you want everybody to play good defense. Um, is that something that, that came from that experience? And is defense probably the, the most important thing out there in soccer? I, I think in any team sport, de defense, yeah, you know, the old cliche is defense wins championships. And I, I think in any team sport, your defense has to be top notch if you want to be a top notch team. Um, kind of a unique thing, when I was at Indiana, coach never recruited a defender. He recruited the best soccer player he could find because he could teach anybody to play defense. And uh, some of the things we do, you know, obviously came from Indiana, everybody had defense responsibilities. And it's just not defense, we call it team defense. Whether you're a front runner, a midfield defender, you're gonna have defensive responsibilities. Um, and we kind of go from that. Uh, I think a lot of times your defense creates your offense. Um, you can have a great defensive night and you're always gonna be in the game. And you can have a poor offense tonight, but you still play great D, you still be in the game. But if you have a poor defensive night, it's gonna be very tough to come out the way you wanna come out. You, your teams have always had a way of kind of changing throughout the season. And then once tournaments roll around, it's like a different team emerges. Um, I know that that's something that, that you've planned and uh, because it happens year after year. You're probably not gonna tell me what that secret is, but how, how do you do that through the season where you're evaluating which player is best in what position and then make it all come to fruition around tournament time? Uh, there, there's a lot of different things that we try and do, and, and you're correct. I'm not going to tell you every single one of them. Um, a lot of it is, is the schedule we play. We, we try and, and test ourselves from day one what we're going to be because you, you want to play your best at tournament time. I think that's everybody's goal. Um, traditionally, we open up with Father Ryan, which is a great measuring stick not only for Father Ryan but for ourselves as well um, as far as where we are right from the, right from the start. Um, you have a tough schedule, a tough preseason. Um, you put demands during the regular season. Um, and I think a lot of it's just an expectation as well, with a few other unmentionables. 
But, I mean, I love tournament time. And, and I think our, our teams enjoy tournament time. And we try and do some things during tournament time and lead up to tournament time to make things special. Again, growing up with my background, you lost, you were done in every tournament. Um, in, in Tennessee, I know it's a little bit different, but uh, it, it just made it so much more special. And it made it so much more of an environment, which we try and carry over now as well. But yes, we, we do enjoy tournament time. Well, and it, it seems like that a lot of times we'll see somebody, I'll take this past year as an example, uh, Samantha Hogan. Hogan played some forward, she played some midfield. Around tournament time, you, you saw a lot of her as a defender. Um, and then midfield again. Is it one of those things where it depends on which team you're playing or how important is it to, to have that person that you can move around from place to place? I think, I think it all goes back to team. Um, and, and to our benefit in our program, some of our best players do not really care what they play. They just want to be what's best for team. And I think that says a lot about the kids we have at our school. Um, team is always first. Um, so whether it's best for us for Sam to play in the back or up front or in the midfield, it, it did not bother her as it has not bothered other people in the past. Um, I think that's one thing that makes this place very special because they want to be successful. Day in, day out, our best players are our hardest workers, which I think that makes it easy for everybody else. But again, when you have that basic team foundation, it makes everything roll pretty well. Now, we've, we kind of discussed this beforehand and you you had a slight objection to it and I, I'm going to try to phrase it the best way that I can but on the field you're, you're kind of intense um, I've been it, called it, it, it's business it's business that's what it is it's it's not a game this is business um, I've even heard some people say that you're intimidating uh, off the field though that's not the case. I mean, I, I don't know that many people get to see you on that side. Um, but does that, that come from your time, you know, obviously coaching and playing at a high level where you can turn that on and turn it off? Uh, as a coach, if, if I don't ever have the juices flowing, it's time for me to do something else. Um, but I think as a coach, your team wants to be somewhat a, a replica of what you are. Um, and, and with my personality, again, I hate using the word my, but um, that's the way I am. And I think that, that helps our team because I'm consistently that way. That helps our team day in, day out, be consistently that way. As you alluded to, I, I'm pretty happy-go-lucky off the field. But what comes on the field, I want to have a good time by, by getting after it. I want to have a good time by playing hard. And I think our kids, for the most part, understand that as well. A lot of it just has to go back to communication. We, we communicate that early to the parents, we communicate early to the kids, and they know what's going on. Um, I don't think that intimidation comes from a, a junior or senior, even a sophomore. Maybe, maybe some of the freshmen. Um, and, and for the most part, I don't think parents are, are intimidated. So I think that intimidation is kind of a, a misnomer out there maybe, maybe an illusion that the press tries to create. I, I don't know. but uh, um, I, You have to be true to yourself as a coach. Um, there's a, and I, I talk to a lot of coaches here at school, and I, I find a lot of coaches here at school. There's a coach, he's very successful here at school. On game day, he's very relaxed. He's doing this, he's doing that. He, he, he does a great job on the field, but he's so relaxed. And, and, and I'm around him a lot on game day. That's not me. And at the same time, the way I do things is not him. And, and we joke about that a lot, or, or we've mentioned a lot, but uh, you, you just have to be true to yourself. But I think if you're true to yourself and you're consistent, then for the most part everything's okay. I don't know if that answered your question or not, but... Well, it, and it did, and when I say intimidating, I wasn't talking about from maybe your player's perspective as much as the other team. Um, I, I know that a lot of teams come in here and I, I've talked to their coach and maybe their player afterwards, maybe not even in county, but they feel like they're beat as soon as they get on the field of dreams. And a lot of that is the atmosphere that y'all have created and the success that you've had over the years. Uh, do, you, do you think that that's something that, that has been painted? And have you seen teams come in defeated before they even take the field? 
I think in my career, every every team but one has shown up when they're supposed to show up, and every team but one has, has tried to give us their best shot. So I'm not going to buy into that statement too much. Um, but obviously, you do want to create a, a competitive atmosphere. You do want to create a, a home field advantage. Um, and, and again, a lot of different things go into that. But again, I think that's one thing that makes our, our community so special, is they do want to be successful. They do want to see the sport flourish. They do want to support the program. And you know, we, we try and do our best to upend on our end as well. Something else that we discussed beforehand is you, you've had a great tradition. And that's something that you really like to use is, is the word tradition. Um, you don't really, and you hate this part, and I, I know it and I'm going to get a frown when I say it, but you, you haven't really gone through a rebuilding stage. It's more like a reloading stage. How have y'all been so successful year in and year out, boys and girls side? I think the word rebuild, I think the word reload are kind of one of those words that are kind of in the eye of the beholder. Um, to some people, what is a reload, maybe a rebuild to us, and what maybe is a rebuild to us, you know, maybe something else, somebody else. I, I think those words are just kind of, uh, we don't put much stock to that. Uh, we, we want to be successful year in, year out. Not only on the field, but off the field. Um, some years it's easier than others. Some years um, things change more than others. But I think when that aspect is there, that expectation is there, that, that's a large part of right there. Um, we just want to be the best we can be. Whether it be state champion, region champion, district champion, we just want to be the best. Um, and I think, again, kids know that coming into it. And I think the parents know that coming into it as well. They know there's going to be expectations. So again, that, that rebuild, that reload, um, I think as coaches, we look at things every year. Is, is this program okay? What we're doing here, the off season need to change. I mean, we reevaluate every year. So I, we, we don't talk all about rebuilding, reloading. I, and again, I think that's one of those press terms that they throw out there to try and sell newspapers or whatever. Well, that's a good thing we don't have to sell newspapers. Uh, you, you, you've gone and had a lot of success yourself. Um, and you've talked about this is your program, boys and girls side. It, it's not really a team, it's more of a family. Um, that's kind of shown because you've had players come back to assist you in coaching, help you in camps. Um, how did you develop that into a family atmosphere to where people just want to stay involved? Because there's parents involved even to this day and their kids haven't played in four or five years. Well, I think the point you made at first is it's not my program. It's not about coach. It's about team. And I think, again, that's, that's our basis. That's our foundation. So I think it's a lot easier for people to be part of a team, even though their kids may not be involved, because it's not about one person. Um, 83, our school won the state. 86, our school won the state. And 89, our school won the state. And there were three different coaches during those nine, 10 years. So I, again, I don't, I don't think the coach is, is the, the prime um, pillar of the program. The coach may be the face of the program, but it's not the prime pillar. And whatever's best for team is what we try and do. So again, I think the program is bigger than anybody. Um, we don't ask people to play. We don't um, recruit people to play, but people want to play because I think what the program stands for. And, and I say this all the time, the, pro the program's going to flourish long after I'm gone. Um, I think there's people probably do a better job than I probably do. So again, it's just not about one person. But I think that family atmosphere is not just one thing or one sentence. That's, that's a continuing um, something we try and, and build and support and, and, and work on and change. And just like any family, you're going to have ups and downs. But uh, I think that that's one thing that, that we try to bring back from Indiana. Um, to this day, if I call Coach Yeagley, he'll do whatever he can to help me. And, and I've been out of, of, of college now for 26 years. I, I never scored a goal for Indiana, but he would do whatever he could to help me. Um, Indiana just won the national championship Sunday. And, and I talked to him, I text, you know, his wife's texting. I mean, just, it's just such a family atmosphere. And again, I, I didn't even play, but that, that's just something that they've um, have grown and nurtured and, and you know, some, we, we try and do the same thing down here. 
Well, and that, that has played into the, the way this has gone. Um, you, you've had different things that have happened over the years, and maybe this team will play a little more aggressive than another team. Do you have a so-called coaching style, or do you adapt – to the players that you have each year? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Uh, I think there is a, a, everybody has a style. Everybody has a, has a, a manner in which to go about things. But I think you have to adjust what you want to do depending on what, what talent you have. Um, we, we like to be strong in the air, but there, there's been some years that we couldn't win a head ball. And I'm not talking about the guys or the girls, I'm just talking about in general. So we had to adjust our play a little bit based on what we have. And, that, and that's just one example. Um, we like playing a certain system of play, but there's been some years where we've adapted both for the good and the bad based on what we have. But I think any coach does that. Um, you know, we like to play the wing tee in, in, in football, but I know those coaches, they adjust the wing tee based on what the, the talent they have. Um, I think Coach West does the same thing in basketball, but I think anybody does that. Um, so, yes, to answer your question, yes, there's a certain thing you'd like to do. Um, I call them characteristics. We want to play hard. We want to be organized. We want to be focused. We want to be um, outstanding on restarts, offense and defensively. Th those are some trademarks I think over the years, hopefully, we've been able to do. Um, now, as far as what system we quote unquote play, what formation, that, that may vary from year to year based on, again, our talent, our abilities. Uh, does, does that kind of answer your question? Yes. And okay. The boys, you, you've won numerous state titles. Well, I have won. Well, the, pro, the, 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 the program, program itself. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Um, you've been there for those. It, and I and I know from talking to you, it, it's just going to be. You're going to be careful how you answer. But is is there a particular team that maybe you looked at now and said maybe they overachieved or you got more out of them than what you had thought was possible at the first of the year is there there one thing that sticks out well i think if you talk to people around the state year in year out we're not expected to win maybe we have players expect us to win as far as i'm talking about the state um and we may have some parents but again 89 98 in 2010 um, since we've been involved, I don't think we were picked to win any one of those years. Uh, but obviously we did. Um, yeah, they're, they're special. Those, those years are special. But I mean, you know, 2000, 2005, 2006, we're losing PKs. That, that was pretty special. 1990, um, we won the state in 89, lose 10 seniors, come back in 90, and we're back in the state finals again and lose 1 0 on a PK. That, that was pretty special. Um, and you got several years with the girls, maybe we're just. You know, a step away or two steps away. We lose to Cindy Parla four to one, you know, like in '94, and she goes on and plays the national. Leaves high school early and plays on the national team. I mean, that, that was special. So I mean, there's there's a lot of special things. That, again, that's why I don't think we ever put the tag on that, that we have to win. We we just want to be successful. Um, and, and to be quite honest, I've enjoyed every year I've been here. Um, and again, if I don't, then it's probably time for me to do something else because th this program, this school. This community is so special that if if things aren't enjoyable, then you probably need to do something else. Now, you've, you, you've gone through here, and the girls have been close. And you, you kind of brought this up. But the girls have been close. How disappointing is that to you as a coach? Um, I, I know from... The, I, I think one of the years that we covered it out in uh, Chattanooga and Maria Sanchez was on there. Marcella? Yeah, Marcella. I'm sorry. Uh, it looked like y'all had it that year. 2006. And you ran up against who Who was it? That Bearden. You just packed it in. Knoxville Bearden. Bearden. Uh, as a coach, was that frustrating because... I think that you had the better team. Um, I think you had better players. They got a goal. I, I thought it was lucky. And then they just packed it in. Is that frustrating from the sidelines? 
I, I think I think as a coach, it's always disappointed when you don't win. Um, even years when we don't have quote out of the talent and we don't win, it's disappointing. But I think that's why you want to coach. Um, if not, then we could just play video games and call it a day. But when, when you're dealing with, with athletes, when you're dealing with high school boys and or girls, um, and everything goes on to high school, that, that's what makes it a challenge. And to be quite honest, that's what brings us back year after year for, for that challenge. Um, again, going back to those juices on game day, that, that's, that's why you play the game. I, I, I don't think anybody gets psyched up just playing a video game. Um, and you may get psyched up watching teams play, but when you're actually out there competing, it's, it's a totally different situation. Uh, you can go to the state championship every year, but until you're out there actually competing, it's, it's a totally different feel. Um, but I think that's what makes you go. So to answer your question, sure, every year is disappointing. It'd be quite honest, um, and every coach will tell you this too, I think, even the years you win it all, there's a certain amount of disappointment because it's over. Right. Um, you know, every year we, in 2010, our guys were disappointed just because we're done. Yeah, they had a ring, but they're still disappointed because they, they still want to play. So there's always a, a degree of disappointment. But at the same time, there's always the next chapter to go to whether it be the next year or for a lot of guys going on to college or, or whatever the aspect may be. So it's just part of the life we live. Now, on the, the girls and the boys side, I know this is probably going to be a different answer, but are there teams out there that have given you a little more problems year in and year out? That's a simple answer. All of them. <laughs> Plain and simple, all of them. No. Um, to be honest, I think if, if you look at the girls' side, Franklin High School, year in, year out, they're in the state tournament, um, won numerous state championships. They were very good um, back in the 80s when, when the sport just started, and that they've just been able to sustain that. And that that's, that's a remarkable feat on their part, and you really have to take your hats off to them. So I think you know Franklin on the girls' side, and the guys' side, there's a little more parity, but uh, you know you look at the Beardens, the Farragut's, the Houston's, um, you know, there, there's just a lot of real good, solid, you know, Baylor, Father Ryan, there's just a lot of good, solid guys teams as well. So, I mean, but again, we, we try and test ourselves with most of those teams year in, year out. So, it's just, it's a good um, competitive rival with, with those teams. Do you still get your seniors input when you're making out your schedule for the upcoming season? Yeah, yes and no. Um, not as much as I used to, because it used to be that they always thought we had to play the toughest schedule. And we still try to play a tough schedule. Um, and sometimes the seniors don't want input. So, yeah, we'll ask about a tournament here, a tournament there, or what about this, what about that? So, yeah, yes and no to answer that question. Now, when you have your tournament on the boys and the girls' side, you, you try to get the very best teams in here that can you can possibly get in. Yes. Most of the time, those teams come from a good ways out. Mm-hmm. Has there ever been a time when maybe you said, you, you know what, we're going to try to get some teams around close that we don't usually play that may not be the same kind of talent? Well, uh, no. Um, for a lot of different reasons. Again, especially with the girls, we play that the Labor Day weekend, which is pretty early, so we want to be tested. Um, right now, Franklin and Father Ryan are the other two teams that come in that we don't play. They want to be tested too. To be honest, we have a lot of teams that'll say, well, Hendersonville, Franklin, Father Ryan, that's too tough a weekend, we're not coming. Yeah. So we kind of face that a little bit, but no, we, we, we want to bring in quality teams. Now I think most of the good teams want to go somewhere where they're going to be tested for, for you know two, three quality games. So no, we, we, don't, we, try, we don't try to slack things at all. When you have that tournament, how much do you learn about your team and is it more learning about them playing back to back to back games or how they handle adversity? Uh, all the above. I mean, you have adversity three games in, in three days, which is very extremely tough to do against that, that quality of competition. So that says a lot about their uh, inner being a little bit. Um, and a lot of times three different styles that you're gonna play. Um, so uh, yeah, there's all the above. There's a lot more to uh, playing in a tournament than just playing. How you handle the verse, how you handle it on the road if you have travel on the road, um, how you go about your studies. There's a lot of different things that go in that, that play. Um, and a lot of times it's, it's a great way for here at home for our program to, to show how 
we treat other people with hospitality and, and organizing and, and you know how the field looks etc so th there's a lot of different things going to that yeah we'll, we'll kind of wind this up but I, I wanted to ask a few personal questions family questions okay uh, before we ended up the 2010 boys team that won the state championship uh, when you were out there and you you got to have your family there how special was that because both of your kids were at the point at that time where they realized how big of a feat this was um, and you could kind of celebrate I, I don't know it may have been the happiest I've ever seen you um, What's, was that a special time? I'm not talking about the team being more special than anything else, but the celebration itself and having your family there. To be honest, yeah. I mean, um, 2010, my daughter was a senior that year, um, and we came a little bit short her senior year of going to the state tournament. Um, obviously, she was well uh, graduated with a lot of those guys. Um, Joy, I think, was in the seventh grade, maybe, eighth grade, seventh grade, something like that. Um, so obviously he knew what was going on. Um, probably some of the best advice I ever heard a coach give, and, and, and Coach Yegley said this many times, you have to enjoy the moment. Um, 89, our second year here, uh, just Denise and I, yes, we enjoyed it. 98, um, almost 10 years later, yes, we enjoyed it. And, and my kids were, were pretty young then. But uh, for, for as you alluded to, for, for something like that in 2010, for all of us to really know what was going on, uh, it, was, it was pretty nice, pretty special. Now, I've had the, the pleasure of talking to both your kids, um, and I, I know that your daughter's taking nursing now, but she's expressed a little bit of interest in coaching. Not as much as Joey, probably. Joey seems to be pretty, pretty much set in that. Um, is that something that you've discussed with them, and what would you advise him to do if he, if he did ask you? I mean, like every family, uh, you have differences. And, and, and Joey and Kelsey, now just the male and female, they're, they're pretty different in their aspects as well. Um, I, I think Kelsey, that, that's kind of in her background. I won't say it's plan B, but that, that's kind of in her background a little bit. And, and Joey, even though a lot of people think that's what he wants to do, he, he doesn't think he wants to do that right now. But I think those coaching skills are, are a large part of what he wants. He, right now he wants to become an architect. But I think the organization he has, the, the, the um, demeanor that he has, will, will, will do him well in that, in that aspect as well. I don't think either one of them totally ruled that out. But at the same time, I think they do realize everything goes into it. Um, and I think they'd be well prepared if they ever went into it. But I think right now they're, they're kind of looking at something else. Well, and as a father and a coach, would you want them going into something like that? Would you want them to be a coach? If that was truly their passion, sure. Uh, I, would, I would have, you know, I'd be late if that was truly their passion. But I think as a, as a father, you want your kids to be um, excited about what they're doing. Uh, you want your kids to be, have that same passion for their occupation that I do about mine. And that's one thing I tell the parents every year. I hope you enjoy your occupation as much as I do. Because I, I really enjoy what I do. Um, but I think you just want your kids to be excited and, and, and uh, willing and able and um, looking forward to doing what they want to do. Well, Coach Plummer, we appreciate it. Uh, thank you for talking with us today. Thank you.